Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know question. Today's Do You Know question is, do you know what the story of the Magi is all about? The story of the Magi appears in only one Gospel, the Gospel of Matthew. And primarily the focus of the Gospel story is to show that Jesus did not come just for Jews, but Jesus came for all people, Jews and Gentiles, the non-Jewish world. And therefore, Matthew's focus with regards, of, uh, with regards to the story of the Magi was not one of historical accuracy or significance, but rather to try to get a particular theological point across, to try to communicate something about Jesus and the Incarnation, that it was a manifestation of God, not just to the Jews, but to the entire world. And so, Matthew structures the story as a revelation of God to the Gentile world represented by the Magi. Now, who are the Magi? The Magi are referred to, first of all, as coming from the East and being astrologers. That is about all that we know about them in terms of the story from Matthew's Gospel. We know that they came to reckon, they followed the star and they came to recognize Jesus as the king uh, that, that was to be adored and worshipped, that the one who would bring peace and harmony to the world. And they brought gifts. And we know that they brought three gifts according to the Magi story in Matthew's Gospel, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they visited Jesus not in a stable but in a house. Uh, and they offered their gifts and then they departed on their way home by a different route. That's all that we know. Because the story took on greater and greater significance in the manifestation events of the life of Jesus, uh, over the centuries, Christians embellished the story over time. Uh, so much so that uh, all sorts of new details were added to the Magi story. In the third century, for example, we get the idea that, that there were three Magi. Uh, and this was done on the basis of the three gifts that they brought uh, in, the, in the Matthew's account. Uh, they brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Right? Uh, by the sixth century, we have the Magi's have now been turned into kings based on this, the uh, Old Testament accounts, primarily Psalm uh, 72, uh, verse 10 and Isaiah 60 uh, verses 3 and following who meant that uh, speak about kings bringing gifts uh, uh, kings from Sheba coming to bring gifts and to offer gifts by the ninth century we have more embellishment where uh, the kings have now uh, come to represent all the ages and all the races that existed in the world as a manifestation of Jesus to the whole world. And so what we have the physical appearances described, the physical appearance of first one being uh, old, young, and middle age, and white, brown and black, representing all ages and representing all races. Um, for example, I mean, today we even get the specifics of Melchior, uh, the names that were given to the, uh, names that were given to uh, the Magi, now kings, uh, were Melchior. Melchior were, was the oldest of the three, and he was white with a usually picture of a long white beard, and he brought the gift of gold. Uh, the younger, the middle-aged person, excuse me, was Balthazar, and Balthazar was always pictured as black, uh, and he brought the gift of mirror. And finally, you have the youth being represented by Casper, who brought the gift of incense, and he was of a darker you, representing brown, or the brown nations, and so on. And so, we have not only, by the ninth century, not only their physical appearances, as well as their representation of the ages, and so on, but also names given to them, and associated with their with particular gifts. Even the gifts themselves took on 
greater significance because gold was seen as uh, representing the royalty of Christ, incense was seen as representing the divinity of Christ, and uh, myrrh representing his suffering and death. Uh, and so many of these traditions were embellished because they do not appear in any of the Gospels and so on. And many of the, the additions were embellished simply because the, tukka, the story took on uh, great significance in the religious imagination of most Christians. One final thing that's also associated with the Magi is the blessings of homes, which are supposed to occur on January the 6th, the Feast of the Magi. And in the blessing of home, what you're supposed to do is with blessed chalk, either a priest or the head of the household, can mark the main uh, doorpost of the home with the years uh, separated by the initials of the three kings. So uh, this year, for example, would be the year 20 plus the uh, C plus M plus, uh, plus B plus 17, plus being the sign of the cross, actually, among all those. And you would mark the, your, your doorpost with sacred, uh, with blessed chalk to hopefully ask God's blessings and God's, uh, uh, God's blessings on the home, as well as the manifestation of uh, Christ to all who went to this house. And so uh, I hope that this has helped and understand a bit more of what the Magi are all about and how over the years greater embellishment has um, been added to their story in order to uh, facilitate the spiritual meaning of what the Magi are all about. So I hope this has helped and I hope you will return again once more to learn more about our tradition, our faith, through do you know questions. Thank you.